Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Cape Free Global Capital Limited Q3 FI22 Earnings Conference Call, hosted by Go India Advisors. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference, please signal an operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchtone telephone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Ravi Bhatt from Capri Global Capital Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Inba. Uh, hi and good morning, everyone. This is Ravi Bhatt from Investor Relations. Thank you for diving into the call. Uh, we shall start with an overview on Q3 FY22 business and earnings uh, uh, by our MD, Mr. Rajesh Sharma. Uh, thereafter, we shall have the q and I, I now request Mr. Sharma to share the opening remarks. Yeah, good morning and uh, hearty welcome to everyone on the call. For much of the last two years, discussions on earning calls have revolved on and around the effect of COVID pandemic and the ongoing or waning COVID waves. We experienced the Delta wave in the opening two months of the financial year and had hoped a third wave, if it occurred, would be milder than the second wave. I am sure you are relieved just as we are on the third wave turning out to be shorter and less impactful compared to the earlier two waves. In the 10 states and union territories where we operate our MSME retail and construction finance business, F2 COVID cases have continued to register a steep drop and fresh infections have also declined sharply. The state governments have also announced an end to the restrictions put in place at the start of the third wave. With this, daily activities have fast returned to normalcy. At Capri, we tackled the third wave in the six-week period between the last week of December 21 to first week of Feb 22 through a flexible work plan with the mandated work from home and need-based work from office. Our field sales operations were barely disrupted and business in the month of Jan and Feb 22 indicates we are continuing to maintain the momentum and on the track to deliver over 22% year-on-year growth in the AUM in FI22. As you are aware, the board of Capri Global approved the Q3 FI22 results on Saturday, 12 February 2022. I hope you had an opportunity to go through the investor presentation. Let me now present a quick overview of business during the Q3 FI22. MSME, the growth in MSME was robust with nearly 30% of incremental disbursal happening in the segment. The robust 9% sequential AUM growth is indicative of the growth potential for the portfolio in H2 FI22. Although the segment currently contributes the highest to the restructured portfolio in NPAs, we remain optimistic about new business while being watchful of legacy assets. Affordable housing, the housing finance segment has also delivered a robust growth momentum during the quarter. Although some customer segments overlap between MSME and housing finance, it is pertinent to note the salaried segment has contributed to a relatively better bounce back and recovery in the segment. As a result, the net NPS considering aggregate ECL provisions at once again negative in this segment. Construction finance uh, segment continued to show robust momentum. It achieved highest dispersal in 12 quarters. We therefore expect the vertical to continue in a healthy growth trajectory going forward. Asset quality remains robust with GNPA at 15 basis and net NPA negative. Though overall contribution of construction finance and AUM basis will not cross 20%. A new car loan distribution business. During Q3 FI22, we expected, uh, expanded to 213 locations across 19 states and union territories compared to 186 locations across 15 states and union territories in Q2 FI22. Two new relationships, HDFC Bank and Bank of Baroda, were added during Q3 FI22, taking total tie-up to five banks. We generated to be 550 crore new car loan disbursals for these banks during the quarter. This was 60% higher quarter on quarter. The total disbursal originated in nine month FI22 is to date rupees 950 crores. I'm happy to share this business broken even in October 2021. Co-lending model. In December 2021, we entered into co-lending arrangements with the State Bank of India, nation's largest commercial bank and Union Bank of India, the sixth largest pub public sector bank, 
for the coordination of MSME loans. Under the arrangement, State Bank of India and Union Bank have initially sanctioned an aggregate amount of rupees 850 crore rupees for lending, of which CGCL shall retain 20% on its balance sheet. We have kick started this channel and made a small start. We expect it to gain strong momentum in the next six months. As of now, our primary growth target for co lending is to fully utilize the initially sanctioned amounts. New product, we are gearing up for the launch of our new secured loan product, that is Gold Loan. The business head has already been onboarded and people and physical infrastructure is being shaping up. We are targeting a network of 1500 branches and a loan book of rupees 8000 crore over the next five years. New branch additions, we have regularly highlighted that our business has people and touch intensity and therefore requires a brick and mortar setup for sales and loan originations. Keeping this in mind and our medium term goal of 225 branch network, we added 11 branches during Q3 FI22. This takes the total branch addition to 25 nine month FI22. Higher than the 21 branches we added in FI20, the last pre-COVID normal year. We are presently focusing on growing our presence and businesses in Gujarat, Rajasthan, and Madhya Pradesh. Uh, technology, the tech intensity takes over a potential customer is identified for which we use both off the shelf and in-house software. We have also been in the process of rolling out our analytical dashboards for adding decision making in credit appraisal and reducing turnaround time. Our technology team has made a good progress on developing an in-house tech suit and we are looking forward to a beta rollout in the next two quarters. I shall now briefly comment on our earnings and asset quality performance during Q3 FI22. We reported consolidated net profit after tax of rupees uh, 649 million in Q3 FI22, higher 24% quarter on quarter and 32% year on year. The profit growth was supported by strong core profitability and continued resilience of our PNL to accommodate higher OPEX and credit cost. Core earnings, although our spreads dropped 20 basis quarter on quarter to 6.7%, our net interest margin has been robust at 10.3%, driven in part by some one of items and in part by improving mix of higher yielding portfolio. There is a widespread expectation of imminent monetary policy tightening with benchmark GSEC yield already pointing in that direction. We are well positioned to face a tighter policy scenario. We can suitably adjust our asset yield to respond to such a change. Uh, as regard our operating expenses, the cost income ratio in Q3 FI22 at 38.4% is again within our target range of 36 to 40%. Adjusted for one of earnings, the cost income ratio would be about 41%, marginally lower uh, than QOQ. As we have stated, some of the pent up expenditure branch rollout, associated hiring, and technology related spend shall keep this ratio elevated for some time. However, we have sufficient flexibility to control incremental expenses in case we believe business scenario could get adverse. As regard asset quality ratios have improved with GNP ratio declining 27 basis quarter on quarter to 2.99%. Stage 3 asset in absolute terms were stable, in fact marginally lower over Q2 FI22. Provisions coverage ratio has been further improved to 84.6%. If you talk about our collection efficiency, it has improved in MSME from 93.1% last quarter to 96.2% in this quarter. In home loan, it has improved from 93.8% to 98.4%. In conclusion, I would like to reiterate that our growth theme focused on secured urban retail lending is on a sound footing. It shall soon be complemented by revenue streams from recently launched and soon to be launched product. We remain committed to expanding leverage through organic route and deliver mid-teen ROE to our shareholders over medium term. With that, I conclude my opening remarks. We shall now take questions. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. 
If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Anyone who has a question may enter star and one. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Our first question is from the line of Mayank from Incred. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, good morning, sir. Thanks for the you know, detailed discussion. Firstly, my question is on uh, rising in interest rate. Basically, I have two questions on it. Uh, number one is that currently we have seen a very good uh, interest rate offering by banks to MSME. Uh, so, are you seeing any kind of pressure uh, currently on that front? And if the interest rates rise, are you expecting the growth from banks to slow down in the MSME segment? This is my first question. Uh, and second is on interest rate side, uh, that how would our rates increase going forward and how much more upside on yields can we see on that if the interest so, rate rise? Yeah. yeah, so I think your first question is if banks are offering the customers a lower rate of interest MSME loan, how we will compete with them. Is that so? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. So I think the customer, what banks serve in MSME and what we serve are entirely different. We serve those customers who do not have adequate income proof or documentation to avail the loan from banking system. These could be small uh, in tier 3, tier 4 towns, maybe small mom and pop store, maybe a guy, small restaurant on the roadside, maybe a, a fruit vendor, maybe a small garment store who do not record all the transaction in their books and thus they are not able to show adequate uh, sales and profitability and these are our customer segment. So mm -hmm. this is absolutely entirely different than what banks serve and what we serve. Your second question is what kind of interest rate hike we can see. I think uh, it is difficult to predict but even though interest rate rises by 25 basis or 50 basis at the most, we are able to pass on the same kind of interest rate hikes to our customers. So any hike comes that will be really neutral to us. As far as our customer is concerned, they are more smaller loan in the range of about 10 to 20 lakh rupees. And these businesses run on return on efforts rather than return on equity. So half a percent of, of marginal hike to them is not changing their profitability uh, at all. So I think that is not going to impact uh, us. In past also we have seen this cycle when post ILFS and DHFL default when bank have gone slow down and increase the interest rate, we have we are able to pass on and, and, and maintain the growth momentum. Okay. So uh, as for the new RBI circular norms for the uh, GNP recognition, have we complied with that? And is there any additional provision we have made this quarter for that? So if we talk about RBA circular, yes, we have complied with that. Mm -hmm. RBA circular was talking on the two points. Number one, you cannot roll back the NP account unless all the overdue EMIs are collected, number one. Number two, the NP will be recognized on the very same 90th day evening rather than accounting till month end. So these were the two uh, main uh, effect of the RBA circular. Because of the RBA circular, about, about six accounts have been uh, flipped in the, the NPA in about 74 lakh rupees. And if had not been RBA circular come, our effort on rollback would have been seen visible in lowering the NPA much lower. But because of RBA circular, this amount have gone up. So to that extent, we have been affected. Okay, 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 got it. So uh, uh, lastly, on our uh, restructured book, uh, how is that performing? So restructured book is almost about 4% and we have done the adequate provisioning in that. Uh, as far as collection efficient, those account is also concerned. Whosoever is becoming due, there is a positive trend. And in case we see some slippage, I think there is an adequate provisioning we have done. And top of it, our entire portfolio is collateralized, secured by some real estate, either self-occupied house or self-occupied uh, business premises. So in that sense, we can we can always use the surface provision and and recover. So so we are we are comfortable in that front as well. Okay, okay. Thanks, sir. Thanks. That was really useful. Thanks, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Yes. 
A reminder to our participants, if you wish to ask a question, you may enter star and one. Our next question is from the line of Akash Bhosar from Equator Securities. Please go ahead. Good morning, sir. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Uh, I wanted to understand that uh, the reason why there has been increase in the disbursements during the quarter, uh, would there be any link in respect of changing uh, uh, in uh, underwriting policy of ours or has that remained same uh, across the quarters? So Thank underwriting you. policy have remained the change. As we have stated earlier that we are going to aim for a growth of between 20 to 27 percent. And in that uh, direction, we have added more physical branches, more people on the ground, and and that is the result of taking all these steps that we are able to be on the stated path path of the growth, and that is absolutely as per the strategy and the uh, budget. So it is not because of the change or relax underwriting policy, but it is because of the more addition to the branches and people in the direction it was decided. Uh, got it, sir. Thank you. Uh, and one last question. Uh, with respect to our restructured pool, uh, what percentage of our pool would now be out of restructuring uh, in terms of uh, billing? So in restructuring, we, we have given some amount of moratorium and some relaxed way of repayment. So uh, total restructured uh, number of account POS is about 228 crore rupees and uh, I think their repayment will fall in, in, in now next six months now, now one year so we'll know that but so far uh, HB has said that our restructured asset is also collateralized and any slippage happen we, we are quite capable to recover as we do for other cases also got it got it sir thank you thank you any participant who wishes to ask a question may enter star and one. Our next question is from the line of Srishri from Wellwin Consulting. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir, and thanks for giving me this opportunity. Uh, my first question would be on your home loan side. Uh, so in this business, we are seeing a great traction in the housing demand. Uh, would this mean that significant growth would come from this business vertical? And uh, uh, second would be so your annualized ROEs are over fourteen percent. Given that we have recently started our co lending arrangement, what sort of ROEs are we expecting in the next couple of years? And are we planning to add more banks under co lending? And what sort of monthly uh, disbursements are we targeting under this under this model? So first, that whether the home housing finance will continue to the same kind of growth answer is yes home loan is a very big market and with the increase in number of branches i think we will continue to uh, achieve a growth in the range of 25 percent plus in home loan uh, segment okay. and uh, if you talk about co-lending i think uh, largest bank state bank and union bank two are adequate bank while we are getting uh, the uh, discussions and invites from other bank but it would be difficult to manage more co-lending arrangements. So I think we will primarily stick with these two banks, State Bank and Union Bank, unless we believe that we can get the better uh, commercials from other bank in competition segment. Yes, then. Now, what kind of a ROE accretive the co-lending will happen? It will depend on the volume we can achieve. So I think next year, next full financial year, We'll be able to see that based on the technology integration with the banking bank, banking partners, we'll be able to see ki how much volume we can do. Yeah. If we can go full fledged, it can be a completely game changer. But we are waiting how this uh, volume and technology integration happens so it can happen very smoothly. Okay. So okay. we have to wait to see actual result in the next year. Okay. Got it, sir. Okay, uh, that's it for, uh, for now. I'll come back in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone who has a question may enter star in one. Our next question is from the line of Seema Bajaj from RK Consultant. Please go ahead. Hi, good morning, sir. Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. 
सो सर आई वॉन्टेड टू आर स्पेसिफिकली ऑन आर एम एस एम ई बिजनेस विच इज एट फिफ्टी वन परसेंट ऑफ आर ओवरऑल ए यू एम फिफ्टी फिफ्टी सिक्स परसेंट वाई ओ वाई सो आर वी प्लानिंग टू टेक अ कॉशियस अप्रोच है एंड यू नो ऑल्सो कंस्ट्रक्शन फाइनेंस ए यू एम कॉम्पोजिशन हैव इंक्रीज टू हंड्रेड बिट्स इन लास्ट कपल ऑफ क्वार्टर्स लाइक आई वॉन्टेड टू नो वाइल वी आर प्लानिंग टू गो स्लो हेयर or uh, so would you please give a trend that the will this jet trend continue or not so our key growth driver is going to continue to remain the msme segment and affordable housing <coughs> they will contribute 50% and and affordable housing 25% plus if you talk about construction finance we will continue to grow and keep it in overall book basis about 20% and uh, even though in some quarter it can show little bit growth but overall on the year on year basis it will remain well within 20% range and that is uh, we will not let it go our 80% book we want to continue to remain focus on the retail side okay okay uh, right so also uh, like with reference to uh, digital and technology enabling within our company so uh, what are we doing and uh, you know how many people are working under uh, technological front also uh, how to plan to you know enhance these resources how are you planning on that we have already hired the cto who is taking care of all the new technology initiative as well as the implementation of the um, all the the planning and and futuristic discussions so about 20 people already there in technology team besides the normal they are they are separate there is a team which takes care of the day to day which we say they take care of the hardware and other requirement but if, if the hard hardcore technology team is concerned there are about 20 people which includes the engineers and 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 programmers and coders and all that plus we have about <coughs> six people's team in the data science and analytics which is helping us on the Uh, pinpointed decision making in terms of aligning and and navigating our underwriting uh, and and other collection decisioning we also hired one um, collection data analytics guy who will be focusing on the improving the collection efficiency in taking various measures so overall there is a there is a very sharp focus on on enhancing the tech and data science piece and for which adequate team is already on board it Oh, okay okay uh, right so and one last question is that uh, in view of uh, so many areas that we are targeting to grow like why our guidance of 20 to 25 percent aum growth is like still maintained are we uh, sacrificing a normal growth or you know have we peaked like what are your opinions on that so i think with the current product of msme affordable housing we can achieve this 22 to 27% growth once the gold loan product stabilizes in next 12 months we will see whether we need to revise any guidance but this much minimum we will definitely going to achieve last year also we achieved 20% and this year we have already achieved on the 19% so we are on that path to achieve that growth okay right right thank you for so that was very helpful and that's all from my side thank you Thank you. Before we take our next question, we'd like to remind participants to ask a question. You may enter star and one. Our next question is from the line of Preeti Singh from Value Investments. Please go ahead. Hi. Good morning, sir. I just wanted to ask about venturing into gold finance business, and that we're targeting 80 billion over the next five years. What all geographies are we targeting when we open 1500 branches for this business and what would our AUM product mix look like in the next few years If you talk about the gold loan if we see the majority of competition Muthoot and Mannapuram are south based companies while they have their presence in north and west as well but if we see There, there is a lot of scope exists in the north and western indian markets and and also our msme affordable housing business is also in that segment so our gold loan branches presence is going to be in delhi ncr rajasthan madhya pradesh gujarat and maharashtra and that is the area where our 1500 branches will be positioned and uh, we feel there is adequate uh, opportunity exists to create that kind of a book in this region as well as in this space 
Okay, and what about the AUM product mix in the next few years? Uh, you are talking overall, or you are talking about gold yeah, loan? Over, overall. So overall, if we if we achieve by 2025, uh, 26, we are we are trying to achieve a book of about uh, 25,000 crore, and in that, about 8,000 crore is going to be the gold loan. About 4,000 is going to be about uh, four to five thousand going to be construction finance, and about uh, nine thousand crore is going to be MSME. About four thousand crore is going to be home loan. This is what we are targeting. Okay, thank you so much. And my next question is on the car loan distribution. What are our plans for growing this business? Like, uh, who are we looking to tie up with, and any any with more banks for growth? Any more banks for growth? So we already tied up with the five banks, which include Union Bank, Bank of Baroda, Indian Overseas Bank, HDFC Bank, and Yes Bank. And this is a product where we are not lending. This is a purely using our own infrastructure and presence to generate a fee income. And uh, you will be happy to know that we already achieved a volume of 200 crore uh, car loan origination in the month of uh, December. So I think this way uh, we intend to later also add the mortgage loan coordination as well, home loan, uh, where the interest rate are in the range of seven and a half, eight percent salary customer. So this is going to be purely fee income business, leveraging our branch network, leveraging our understanding, and leveraging the our association relationship with the banking. Okay, so got it. And so out of the 15 crore fees that we've made in this quarter, uh, what is uh, what is the cost and how will the cost increase when it scales up and how much can we scale up? So this business at this level, uh, October we have broken even. I think next year onwards we'll be targeting a new car loan distribution business about uh, 12 to 15 crore rupees of profit contribution. Okay, okay, got it. Uh, thank you. That's it from my side for now. Thank you. Thank you. Any participant who wishes to ask a question may enter star and one. Our next question is from the line of Rishri from Wellwin Consulting. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for taking me again. Uh, uh, my my question would be: What are the economics of school lending, and what needs to be done to ramp it up? And second, how confident are we on to hold loans, given that even existing lenders are struggling for growth? I mean, huge spending by PSU. So, if you talk about the advantage of school lending, it will be that without capital, we can increase our book because we will be continue doing what we are doing. The only only change will be that 80% book will be taken or by bank on an ongoing basis. And plus, further, there are some customer segments we are not able to do it today because of the lower rate of interest. Now, with the state bank and union bank being our partner, we can further go down interest rate in those co-origination loans, and that can improve our productivity and offerings. So, if the co-lending picks up in a full-fledged basis, then in future we will not require any capital, and it will give it will be very highly uh, ROE uh, accretive. It will be easier to reach a ROE of 24-25 percent if the the co-lending cool takes a full-fledged. But we are we are we are watching in the next year, and we are very confident with the focus of banking system and government that the NBFC should do the more lending towards school lending so that everything is <coughs> um, catered and it is a partnership between a bank of low cost fund versus the low cost operation and good collection efficiency of NBFC. So it's a good combination and we are quite excited about it. This uh, year we are hoping that we should do about 75 to 100 crore and the next year when that this technology integration happens, the volume can be much higher. Okay, and uh, so what happens to our NPAs in co-lending? Uh, do we have to bear this uh, proportionately? Yes, so it will be true uh, participation from the banks. 
But, but so it's this 20 80 arrangement so np happen 20 percent uh, credit cost will come to us 80 percent will go to them in the same proportion okay and uh, sir uh, what happens questions regarding gold loan uh, sorry you're saying something uh, no no sir you continue yeah so as regards gold loan you said there is a there is an adequate uh, competition and even existing players is not able to grow but I believe in northern investment segment, this is our niche as far as presence is concerned. And second, we understand the customers who don't have adequate income proof. So I think with the help of technology in our presence and, and building a book of 8,000 code should not be a problem in, in mm -hmm. some of things. The, the should be gap we see today. Okay. And uh, so what happens to the manpower planning and branch planning and how easy is to do this given the late of so many people uh, during COVID? So I think COVID is behind us. Uh, that is what we believe. And uh, as far as gold loan is concerned, manpower and branch planning, uh, while few branches will be uh, overlap with MSME, but most of the branches will be standalone gold loan branches because this is an entirely different business, different kind of customers we are catering to. Okay. So one last uh, question, if I may ask. Uh, so how would uh, OPEX move over the next couple of years, given that we have planned to open so many branches? We plan to open so many? Branches, sir. So I think operating operating capital investment, uh, if you talk about gold loan, the first year capital investment will be in the range of about 25 crore and next uh, FI24 will be out in the range of 60 crore rupees. Okay. Uh, okay, I think that's sufficient. And uh, that's all from my side. Thank, um, thank you so much for your time, sir. Thanks. Thank you. As there are no further questions from the participants, I would now like to hand the floor back to Mr. Sharma for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Yes, so uh, thank you all for joining this call. Uh, as we said, we continue to grow on the path of secured lending, growing our MSME book, or home loan book, and in that, that continuation, we added another secured, we are going to add another secured product of gold loan and we are quite confident, uh, as you see, year after year, our ROE is improving, our cost-to-income ratio is coming down, our NPA in the worst time of COVID have been given in control, despite that uh, courts have uh, passed the order not to take any surface action, which have now been relaxed, hoping uh, that this year, coming year, not only we will see, show a sharp rollback and, and in the NPAs, but our growth momentum will also be maintained. And uh, we have adequate capital adequacy. We have a good banking relationship. We have a strong track record of repayment. And I think collectively with this, we are uh, we are on the path to achieve our studied growth of 20 to 27%. And uh, we hope to achieve 14% plus ROE in the coming year, uh, along with all these developments. So thank you so much. All of you, please stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Go India Advisors, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.